High above the hustle and bustle of these city streets, four of the world's greatest fibbers are about to challenge your common sense and intuition at the regular meeting of the new Liars Club. And now meet our newest members, Kate Barbeauty, Jimmy Walker, Shannon Quee, and the chairman of the membership committee, Mr. John Barber. Thank you very much, folks. Thanks and welcome to the new Liars Club, the only show in television where the celebrities think the F word is fool them. And now our host, the man who is nobody's fool, a young bachelor who is nobody's, Eric Corbin. <laughs> oh, oh, thank you. Nobody's what? Oh, I get it. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the new Liars Eric, Club. Hello, Eric. Hello, everybody say hello to Eric. Hi, hello. Eric. Hey. Wait, what, do you want to borrow some money or what's no, the deal? No, no, we don't need anything. Okay. I just want you to know that uh, it's nice to be back and it's nice to have such handsome people on that side and it's a pleasure to be associated with this organization. Oh. Okay. Uh, I'm do sorry. you see? They're up to their old tricks already. Welcome to the new Liars Club. You've met our uh, long-winded celebrities over here. How you doing, gang? Fine, Let's fine, meet fine, our fine, players fine, for today. Okay. We'll start with you. You are? I'm, who? My name is Robert. And what do you do, Robert? I'm a construction worker. All right. Oh, yeah. those are the guys that keep making those noises at me. Me too. I want that. If they stop making, then you should worry, Shannon. And next to Robert is? My name's Judy, and I work in a, for a con corporate consulting firm, and it is related to advertising. Well, mm -hmm. Very important. And you are, sir? I am Russ, and I am a person that's on permanent vacation. <laughs> I like being, that. Being a retired public servant. <clears throat> okay. Enjoy your vacation. And finally, we have? Pat. And Pat. I'm a music teacher and songwriter. Ooh, all right, interesting panel. Good luck to all you guys, and good to meet you. You know how to play the game, don't you? It's real simple to play the new Liars Club. An object or invention is placed in front of this group over here. Each one of our celebrities will tell a story about it, sometimes very wild. Your object, to find out uh, win prizes, spot the truth teller. Uh, we spot you 100 points to start off. There you go. You can bet half the amount up to 100 points per round. And we play four rounds here on the new Liars Club. If anybody gets all four rounds correct, they win fabulous stuff. Don't they, Ted? Tell us all about it. Ted. You'll win the Omega Computer Sewing Machine. Unsurpassed quality, versatility, and ease of operation. Omega offers the latest technology. Test sew an Omega and you'll never settle for anything less. Omega, the sewer's dream. Let me wish you good luck one more time. And without any due haste, we uh, start with John Barber. Well, see this is the only one of its kind ever made. <laughs> no, uh, it, uh, it's, it's not what you think it is, Shannon. It's not a porta potty No, it is not. It is, it is not. What it is, actually, uh, Russell might be familiar with this because he's just a little, little older. Most people would think that spittoons come in just one piece. And for the younger audience, spittoon, guys who chew tobacco and they want to spit it away, and they, they made spittoons. This is called a spit, uh, ping spittoon. And the reason for that was that in a darkened club or a darkened tavern, a guy had to know that he didn't hit the floor or hit the side of the bar or the table, that he actually got his goober into the spittoon. And if he didn't, did he go over and pick it up? <laughs> no, no he, just, he just knew he would miss. But see, this has been banged around a lot from being in a lot of bar fights. But this goes on top here. And if this were absolutely symmetrical, if you would spit into this, <laughs> and it would hit this, it would make a ping sound. Unfortunately, it's been banged around, so it doesn't make the sound. Come but on, that's, John. that's exactly what it is. It is never a heard ping such a spittoon. Such a ridiculous uh, explanation of my life. Yeah, Shannon. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Before they were electric, women had used facials, had facials. And what they used to do is put steaming hot water in here with herbs like chamomile or maybe sometimes lemon. And this would allow the steam to come up through a funnel-like shape so they could steam their face with towels over to get a facial. And their face would go ping, I suppose. Uh, <laughs> no, but they, but they'd have to missed. wipe up all that goober inside. <laughs> Ooh, goober. I don't want to hear that word again. Ooh. What this is, black thing invented by my cousin. 
Uh, my cousin Junebug. Junebug. Yeah. June, what's wrong? Cousin Junebug came up with this because he, sure. he used to work with uh, my my uh, my aunt. Gizmo. Was he related to Gizmo? Gizmo was not in this one. This cousin right, Junebug and my other aunt Jemima, which was there. <laughs> and and what happened was. He would be in there, and my aunt would have to make these Caucasian people this pudding, you know, because they were in England at the time. They stopped off on their way over. And what happened was, they used to make the rice pudding and everything like that, and the Caucasian people said, we want a hole in the rice pudding or the, or the pudding thing. So Cousin Gizmo came in with a little thing like this. You put your rice pudding in here, bam! Cousin Gizmo came in with it, flip it over, hello, rice pudding, hole, mold, bun maker, everything. <laughs> Encourage Musical him, instrument no. for a rock band. <laughs> nice. In reality, what this is now, you people look bright enough, so they haven't to believe. I surely you haven't believed this nonsense here. This is nothing more than an ashtray from an old hotel that was uh, wrecked. The hotel was in Portland, Oregon. It's very old. It's solid brass, and and just take a look at it. And that's all now, it was. What's the hole for a big cigar? No, this was put on there, and you. Take a look at it. It's an ashtray, and you would stub your cigar. It's an your ashtray. Cigarette. That's and what Pete empty says. It, they do this and just dump it out. It's an ashtray. That's all. All right. Those are the four stories. One, believe it or not, is true. Place your bets. Odds are even. This round one to one. Or in mind, everybody, what our stars just told us. John said it's a spittoon. Shannon said it's a facial steamer. Pink. Jimmy said a rice pudding mold. Pink rice pudding mold. And uh, Pete said it's an ashtray. All right. Pink. I'm going to start. Pink. Find out how you bet first of all. Okay. No, nope. name goes underneath and the money goes on top. All right. By the way, do you know what the world's record for tobacco spitting is? 37 feet, six and a half inches. Wow. I was there. I saw it in Mississippi Many a year ago. Said... How big was the gob? <laughs> the goober, I think, is technically. <laughs> anyway, Robert, how many points you betting? 30. 30. Yeah, Judy. Right. A daring Judy. 30. Judy. Russ says. Look at I'm Russ. He 50. Care. Yeah, Russ had 40. Okay. okay. The audience approves on the betting. Now, I never know what it is till I open this envelope. This is clearly... Oh. See, I know these things. 37 half feet, right in there, ping, it's a spittoon. John told the truth. Yeah, I'm looking for a bet on John. Robert, you bet on Jimmy. 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 Oh. Have you ever had rice pudding with a hole in it? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Judy bet on John. Way to go. Russ, bet on Pete. I've never seen this between that size. No, either have it's I. It's a small one. <laughs> 40 on Pete. Oh, I'm oh, sorry. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm I'm sorry. So okay, sorry. round one is complete. We'll continue right after this. Round two, very similar to round one, except now the odds are doubled, two to one. All right, and we start this time with uh, Pete Barbuti. Hello, everybody, and uh, sorry you weren't smart enough to get the last one, but you'll get this one. Now. <laughs> Russell, I hate to keep referring to you for your age. John did that, it's, uh, somewhat disrespectfully, I think. But <laughs> before, the, uh, before what we know today is tape recorders, there was such an item as a wire recorder. I don't know if you remember it, Russell. And the medium it used, instead of a, a, an audio tape, which is about a quarter inch wide. They used wire as the medium. before my time. Yeah, before your time. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> about a year older than Fright. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, this is a degausser. This, if you could feel it, so it's rude. very heavy. There's a magnet in it. You know, I mean, I, there's a magnet in it. And the wire was run through this device here. And it was used for erasing. Like today, they have what they call a bulk eraser for audio tapes. This is a, a degausser or bulk eraser for wire tapes. You can see how it flips over so it gets both sides of the tape. It's very old but very efficient. Worked very well. I guess you, you heard it. This here, definitely a black thing, without a doubt, invented by my cousin Gizmo. Yeah. Now see, I Gizmo came up, the Gizmo is on this. this is, we have many black patterns. They're all registered in black land, but nothing in regular white land. <laughs> so anyway, what happened was, in the old days, during the days when we were doing a lot of things, cutting and knifing and stuff like that, <laughs> our blades would get a little dull. So we need to sharpen our blades. This is on the run. So you can do this while you're running down the street. Look at that. Sharpen right up there. Flip it over, flip it over, flip it over, flip it over, flip it over. There it is. You're all sharp. You 
turn around, you run the other way, you got yourself a blade, you ready to go. It ain't nothing but a razor sharpener invented by Gizmo on the run, man. Beautiful, I love it. <laughs> Sharpen your blades, dad's your friend, right? <laughs> Yow. Um, Thank you. I just want to say that I, I want to sit beside Pete because John doesn't touch me enough. <laughs> okay. Yeah, but then Jimmy does a good touch. <laughs> Is, is it was used in the notions department of fabric stores and it's used for measuring out one foot lots of ribbon and it turn over every time a foot of ribbon comes out <laughs> and, and, uh, <laughs> and uh, it would all be folded by the time it's all finished folded into foot long and you know they clamp the ribbon and they sell you a ribbon so you don't have to fold it all up anyway it's used in the notions department of stores a notions department. I always wonder what a notions department was. Now I know what it is. I haven't got a notion. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, uh, Pete should have known what this uh, was. It's a very, very simple uh, device. In, uh, in Andres Segovia's time, and Pete should know because Pete's an accomplished musician and an accomplished toucher. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Segro Segovia used to have special guitar picks made. And they were made out of jade originally made out of jade. And this was what he invented and developed to polish the jade guitar picks. And that's oh exactly goodness. what that is. All right, Segovia's uh, jade guitar pick polisher, says John. Pick -picker. Those are the tails. Think about it quickly. Here's, uh, place your bets over here. Here's what our stars just told us. Pete said it's a wire recorder, eraser, or, or degausser. De I like the word degausser. <laughs> Jimmy said a uh, razor blade sharpener. Or honer. Much or honer. <laughs> Shannon <laughs> said for measuring ribbon. Or stuff. Or stuff. <laughs> John said a guitar pick polisher. All right, we're going to start with you, Robert. How many points are you betting? 20. Judy says Why not? 40. Oh, Judy. Watch Russell. Watch Russ. Russ. Look at oh, Russ back. Playing it safe. <laughs> Pat says 20. All right. I think I know what this one is. It looks to me like you could put a razor blade in there. That's my bet. Let's see if I'm right for a change. It is a blade sharpener. Not bad for me. We're looking for a vote on Jimmy. Jimmy. Jimmy told the story. Robert, you're applauding. Will you applaud if I find Jimmy's name behind you? I find Shannon. Oh, <laughs> the Notion that, Department. Okay, Judy, who was right last time, bet 40 on Jimmy. Oh. She's right again. <laughs> Jimmy, we got a Pat, will I find Jimmy? No, no. I find Shannon. I'm sorry. Shannon. We're at the halfway mark here. We will take a break and continue this party when you come back. Welcome back to the show. Uh, Marty's Antiques and Steveston, B.C. sent in this little contraption like to us. game. spit for pigeons. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Pigeon spit. <laughs> Pigeon gob. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know, John. It's, uh, that's a m mysterious. For winding up something, something goes through the bottom and around. Ribbon thing, winder. Obviously. Well, uh, mm. you two guys are close. Actually, mm. it's, a, it's a bandage winder. After you've, uh. after you've cooked a pigeon, you want to wrap it up. <laughs> <laughs> Let's play round three here at the New Liars Club. Round three, the odds are now five to one. Judy, you're two right in a row. Go for two more, and you got that bonus. And we start this time with uh, John, who's holding something very unusual in his hand there. Well, it, it's unusual. Uh, it's not unusual looking. It's not unusual by it, 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 its shape. But it's unusual in its application. And that's one of the things that I really enjoy about this show is because we get to learn a lot of things, too. And this was, this was new to all of us and quite interesting. In the uh, Eskimo culture, Eskimo, uh, the word uh, is Inuit, which means real people. In the Eskimo or Inuit culture, if a man stays over at another man's igloo, he is required by custom to accept the favors of the host's wife. You knew that, Judy? Yeah. Yes, it's okay. Now, if, okay, Judy. Now, Judy you, does uh, that, uh, yeah. Yeah. Now, now, hold it. Okay, now, <laughs> now, uh, this is this is hard to believe. But if three men stay over, the, hus the husband, the husband, if three men stay over, the husband is Play not hearts. going to be that generous with his wife's favors. 
So they have this. Did you cut their thing off? They have this. <laughs> they have this made from uh, made from a walrus rib, and it's got a little hole in here. So first of all, you've heard in Anglo culture, it's spin the bottle. Well, this is spin the boner. Okay. Now, whoever ends up with, with this wahoo, whoever ends up, wait a minute, whoever ends up, Judy, with the walrus rib, has to wear it around his waist so that when he walks into the igloo, up and the, down. the wife does not have to be told with whom she is doing the favors, and it is rude to decline the wife's favors in the Inuit culture. Tell me something, that's hanging there. Does that get oh, away? Oh, yeah. All right. It's instead of. <laughs> Shannon, I'm counting on you strangely for some class now here. I've never been known to have any of that. OK, this is, uh, it is Eskimo. <laughs> okay, we gotta move. We gotta move quickly before it's the authorities get to us. It's used for carving blubber off whale hide, is what it's for. It's made of soapstone, not ivory, and it's used for carving the blubber off whale hide. Okay, <laughs> Jimmy. What do you think? Well, he doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> My hands are frostbite, so I'm just leaving the egg <laughs> But anyway, what this is, you can Here's see. This, had one of those, this is absolutely true. No, my great 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 grand cousin Bubba used to make this. <laughs> It's absolutely true. And you should go out and hunt the elephant. This, and, and all it is is an a ivory ornament that got sliced down into a knife. It was kind of indignious to our... Uh, indignious. That's a good word. I'll keep that in. One was two. Yeah. And it's, a thing. it's an ivory ornament knife full thing. So it's a knife ornament that's indignious. Indignious of the ivory black culture. Okay, 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 okay. <laughs> Uh, if you've ever seen uh, movies of Eskimos carving ice blocks to make their homes, known as an igloo, this is the knife that they carve them with. It's a very small handle, and they go and they carve ice blocks out of this, and they build an igloo. So it is in reality, don't change my wording, Eric, it is an ice block carver. <laughs> ice block carver, that's what he says, place your bets. He may be right, the other three may be right. Exactly. Here are the stories we just heard. we got to make some time here. Uh, John <laughs> said it's an Inuit favor thing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Shannon said a whale blubber slicer. Jimmy said an ivory ornament. And Pete said a uh, snow slicer. Oh, I didn't type say deal. that at all, but that's okay. <laughs> okay. Robert, how many points you bet? 20. 20. Judy, <laughs> 40. <laughs> Russell, 20. 20. Pat, 20. 20. Okay, I'm not even going to guess on this one. I Take wouldn't. a guess, Eric. Take a guess. Blubber. <laughs> it cuts blubber. Okay. No, it's an Inuit snow slicer, which means Pete was telling the truth. Pete was telling the truth. <laughs> Robert, you can win 100 points if you said Pete. No. At least you're consistent. Oh, <laughs> Judy, oh. two right in a row. Did you bet on Pete? You oh. did. Three right in a row. <laughs> Plus, bet on Pete. I got you right this time, Pete. Pat, bet on Shannon. Oh. We're going to play the art corner. We come back. I'm not leaving. Neither should you. <laughs> Welcome back to the uh, new Liars Club. Ready to play round four here. Uh, boy, what a game we got going. Judy's leading with 410, then Russ with 170, then Robert with 30, and Pat bringing up the river 20. But don't worry, it's 10 to 1 odds this time. Anybody can win. And the unlikely event of a tie, the prize will go to the tied player who bets the most in this particular round. With that in mind, You've got three right in a row. Go for another one. Win that bonus, Judy. Spin the wheel. Let's find out what's in today's art corner. We want to know the name of this painting. A name of this painting, and John will start. Well, the wonderful thing about this, it proves that artists can even be colorblind. Uh, <laughs> when an artist does something wonderful once, they like to do it a second time, and a third time, and a fourth time. And sadly, I have not seen the first two, and I hope not to see the fourth, but this is the third <laughs> one in this series, and it's called simply Lotus Series Number Three. Should Lotus! Be it should be number two. But. Lotus Series Two and a Half, possibly. He nice said three. The thing about art is you can do anything you want with it. Sure, sure. This is, um, I don't know if you can see it. I can see it. That's what counts. Here's the bird. Blue bird, see? Sitting on, it's obviously flowers. I don't know if they're lotuses, but they're flowers. It's called, for unknown reasons, Bird on a Wire. Bird on a Wire. That was a Leonard Cohen song, wasn't it? Bird on a Wire. Uh, well, let me, let me just get the painting on the right side. Ah. 
<laughs> now, now we got something. This here is simply entitled, look at this thing. No doubt about it, it's very, you can see a little uh, violence, a little craziness happening there, it's obvious. Armageddon, thank you, please. Well, it's obvious. It's obvious, Armageddon. Armageddon uh, Series 3. <laughs> uh, you can see all the deep, dark, sinister colors in here, all you people, and the way they're clashing together and so forth. And this is simply called Nightmare. It is the personification of the artist's nightmare that had one night you occasionally dream in color, and, this, and it's called Nightmares. No Speaking big deal. of nightmares, if Judy gets them on the right, our producer will have a nightmare. Place your bets over here. Good luck. Ten to one. Here's what the stars just told us. John said it was Lotus Series 3. Shannon said Bird on a Wire. Jimmy said Armageddon. And Pete said Nightmare. We're going to start with you, Robert. How many points you betting? 30. The whole shebang. <laughs> I like that. All right. Judy's betting. I'm scared. You're I scared. 20. <laughs> Russ isn't scared. He goes 90. <laughs> Pat's betting everything. Okay. Okay. The title of that painting is Lotus Series 3. John was telling the truth. Dale, you start way down here. Pat, if you bet on John, you got 200. You zip up, you bet on Pete. I'm sorry. Let's come over here to Robert, who will have 330 points. If he bet on John, he bet on Pete. Too late. Oh, oh. Russ, I'm going to go to you. Right now, you're in second place. If you're right, you will zip into first place. You bet on Shannon. I'm sorry. Judy, you had three right in a row. One more and you win the bonus. Get it right, you win the game. You Did you bet on John? You bet on Pete. You're wrong. You didn't get that. However, you still win the game. Judy's our winner. What did she win? I want to know. You have won a luxurious, sun and fun houseboat vacation on the beautiful Chuchwap Lake in British Columbia. You and your guests will enjoy all the comforts of home while taking in the clean mountain air, crystal waters, and wilderness adventure. Experience the ultimate vacation with sun and fun houseboat charter. Welcome to the Spinning Championship. See you next time at the New Liars Club. Hey, way to go. Yeah! Yeah! Good job. While in Vancouver, guests of the new Liars Club stay at the centrally located Sheraton Inn Plaza 500, where beautifully appointed guest rooms overlook spectacular views of city and mountains. Catering provided by Sears Catering. Let their experts help plan your next party. Call Sears Catering in the Vancouver area. Each of our party contestants will receive a selection of fine gifts from Aussie Mineral Water, natural mineral water with pure fruit juices, the real taste of Australia. Gold Press Muesli Bars from Australia. The nutritional family snack in five delicious varieties. Quest Vitamins, available in better health and nutritional centers everywhere. Quest is quality worldwide. And Parfume Vic, the little French perfume that goes everywhere. Put Paris in your pocket with Parfume Vic for men and women. Hair styled by Avant Garde. Ground transportation provided by Star Limousine Service. 